Hi guys, today we will talk about... Sorry? Exactly. Today we talk about the five worst inquiries the photographers hate to receive. Some are just slightly annoying, but the last two really make our blood boil. In this video, I will not consider what the clients ask after the shoot, like uh, since you will throw them anyway, can you give me also the pictures that I didn't select? Or can you send me all the raw files? Can you change entirely the background? I didn't have time to iron my clothes, but you can do it in Photoshop, right? And all this stuff. I will start from the less annoying inquiries and I will go up to the Olympus of the worst of the worst that you can ask a photographer. First one, random Instagram or WhatsApp message with, hey, how much do you charge for four hours? What's wrong with this message? First of all, hi, good afternoon, my name is... Hey, hi, my name is... I had your number from... You're talking to a professional and I'm 42, so a hey, bro is not really a good conversation start. Second, four hours of what? Event, product, uh, food, uh, fashion, four hours of what? If you're asking about time and you don't mention deliverables, are you assuming that my deliverables have no value and you just pay the time and then you get everything you want from me, deliverables, raw, usage and everything? Do you ever call a restaurant and ask how much it is for three hours of food? Does it even make sense? Sending an inquiry is very easy. Hi, good afternoon, my name is John Smith. I need a photographer for this project. How much do you charge? By time, by deliverables, both together, what's the usage? Thank you very much. The second one is, I will do it by myself, but with the cell phone, I cannot make it. Okay, did you check the portfolio and the work of the photographer? Does it look like a replacement for a cell phone? If you need something that is at cell phone level, just try harder with the phone and sooner or later you will get the result that you need. Because in this case you need snapshots, not pictures. I'm painting the Guernica, I'm not giving a coat of uh, white paint on the wall. And it's okay, every customer has his needs and his budget. Example, look at me. Do you think that for my haircut I call uh, Jean-Louis David in France? No, the cheap barber inside the petrol station will perfectly do the job that I need, as long as he has one working hand and one blade. So there's no problem with not having the budget or not needing a huge amount of professionality. But maybe check the photographer's website before asking. Check his portfolio. Check what are his past clients. Don't expect someone with a good portfolio of campaigns and big clients to come and shoot your cell phone content. Unless you are an animal shelter, and in that case you can call me. Kiki, go! I'm Luca, I'm here in Ras Al Khaima at the Animal Welfare Center with Kiki and some new friends. But I want to wrap the belly of 50% of the puppies before the shooting. Now we are getting into the Luca, just take a deep breath, they are not very experienced zone. Number three, we are a startup, we want to pay less. Wait, 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 wait. Can you please remind me when did I ask you to start your company? Often, startup people have the wrong idea that the whole world must care about their new revolutionary company that does exactly what the other competitors do. But hey, we use words like blockchain and AI now. We all have been startups, even when there wasn't a cool name like a startup to define them. And we all made our budgeting and our sacrifices. Photographers, graphic designers, website developers and creatives in general are not there to absorb your investment. You cannot pay a full price? Okay, no problem, put something else on the table. Give me some sort of 
non-monetary benefit. I will not slash my prices just because you need to buy the bean bags and the ping pong table because your office must look like Google. Offer me shares of your company, offer me your product, offer me your service, and if it's worth it, we can make a barter. Sometimes the benefit doesn't even need to have the same monetary value as the service. I'll give you an example. I have been contacted by an amazing Italian artist that does uh, miniature statues of movie characters. He wants to enter the UAE market, so he created uh, three small statues of uh, our most beloved sheikhs, and he asked me if I can shoot them. Turns out that he doesn't have the budget to hire me, so he just politely told me, okay, I'm sorry, I don't have the budget for this, I don't want to discuss the price because I see the value of your work. Uh, one day, when I will be able to afford your service, I will surely come back. But since I really liked his work and he was also very polite, I offered him to shoot his three miniatures plus a detailed video of the making of one of these little statues that is almost one month of work and I asked him only one thing in return. Exactly, to be me the subject of the miniature statue. I have a little bit of ego, so for me having a miniature statue of myself is more valuable than the money that I would have made shooting those statues. But now it's a win-win situation for both. He will be happy with the pictures, I will be happy with my statue, and we only had to exchange services and work, and nobody had to open the wallet. And now we are getting into the my hands are really itchy zone. Number three. I mean, number four. Give me a good price today because in the future, blah, 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 blah. Because in the future, what? Because in the future, you will ditch me and you will replace me with someone else that will fall for this uh, give me a good price because in the future, bull. Remember that the price that you give the first time will most likely be the highest price that you will ever be able to charge that customer. If they get your work for little to no money, in their mind, you will always be worth little to no money. Your portfolio doesn't matter, your skills don't matter. Nothing in the future will change this, nothing. It's more likely that if the client will grow, they will pay someone else good money, but not you. You are the cheap one. That's it, final decision. The market will always be full of new photographers that will want to steal your job or uh, mom bloggers that can do the shooting for little to no money because the husband makes big money. Clients can always find a way to pay less. The only things that you can do is having such a good portfolio that you will only work for good clients and being able to market yourself properly and ask for the right price. And now the final boss of the worst inquiries. The one that really makes you want to jump on a camel, ride till the middle of the desert and scream. Are you ready? Number five, it's good exposure for you. Boom, I know you were waiting for this. In my 14 years of experience, I never seen a photographer that worked for exposure and became famous and in high demand. And the reasons are simple. If they ask you to work for exposure, most likely you're not good enough to be paid. So the shooting that they will hire you for will be most likely the leftover uh, pictures that the important and well-paid photographer didn't want to do. In the industry, everyone knows who shoots for free. And these photographers are not respected and never, never called for a paid shoot. I mean, they work for exposure, so why would anyone pay them? When I open the local fashion magazines and I look at the editorials and I watch the names of who shot them, I laugh because it's always them. It's always the same four or five names. These people pay for models, makeup artists, stylists, locations, just to have their names written in Arial 4 at the bottom of a page. I had my name in magazines for shootings that I did or for articles about me, but that's absolutely not exposure. There are 5,000 magazines out there, and each of them has hundreds of names printed on them. Did you notice and remember any of them? Exactly. The only ones that will notice them are the vultures that will call them for other exposure jobs. The market chews and spits photographers faster than a llama when you make a joke about this money. You don't become successful working for free, unless you do it for one person. You. Work for free on your projects, for your vision, doing what gets you noticed by your target market. Brands, magazines, influencers, they must open their wallet if they want you. Otherwise, they can simply go to the next gullible guy that will believe in the exposure fairy tale. So, what do you think? What are the worst inquiries that you received? Did you get any that I didn't mention here in this video? Let me know in the comments, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then go out there and go get the good clients. Bye.